Hello everybody, today I am going to be doing a really quick unboxing and review of the Gorillapod. So I do have my old tripod here, this is the Inca i3642B tripod. I don't even know what that means, but um, it was one of the tripods I picked up from the shop some, I don't know, maybe maybe like 5-10 years ago over at JB Hi-Fi. So I thought, um, especially now that I'm doing some of these review videos outdoors, I kind of need a bit of an upgrade, something that's more flexible as well. I don't need something that has all these little um, lengtheners and stuff. It's not something that uh, I really need to get up on a high distance or anything. Just more so uh, anything that I can put on a ledge or wrap around a tree or a pole. So I thought this was a pretty good option. I saw this today at the shops and I decided just to uh, pick it up. Um, that was $59.00. Maybe maybe that's a bit above what I would have paid if I just got it online, but I did get it anyway. This is the box that it comes in. It's pretty basic. Um, you know, it's the 1K kit, so it's for cameras that are up to a kilogram. So my Sony A7C, which I have over here, I'm going to attach it on and we'll see how we go. Um, the camera body itself is about 500 grams. The lens, I think it's about 200 and something grams, though I do have a Tamron 28 to uh, 200 lens that weighs almost as much as the camera body itself. So that does put it over the one kilogram mark. Um, but I'll be using it with this and see how it feels in terms of stability. This is the Rode VideoMic Go 2. So let's open up uh, this box and see what's inside. So as you can see here in the box, proprietary ABS plastic sockets. Um, what I like about it is that it just is able to wrap around stuff. And I thought this was maybe a bit of a gimmick initially, but I've seen a lot of people use this online and it seems like a pretty good, um, you know, in terms of portability, you can carry it around your bag. And I think that's something that I really like because I don't like carrying too much around with me. So they're kind of like, ball and it's in like ball and socket joints like a whole bunch of them in a row so i think this actually weighs 200 grams from the um specifications 200 grams rubberized foot and ring rubberized ring and foot grips you can see it just wrapping around things so let's open this up and see what it comes with the instruction manual seems pretty straightforward to use um put on the Put on a little screwy thing at the bottom of the camera there, and then you connect that on at the bottom. Okay, so it can rotate 360 degrees, and it can um, turn downward 90 degrees or backwards. So I think that's pretty cool. I think for some people who are looking maybe to record overhead videos or something like that, that might be useful. You won't really be able to get up that far, but we'll see how we go. Um, so this is what you get in the box. So it's not a whole, just it's just a couple of things. So we've got... Um, I don't know what that is, just the holder, I suppose. Um, so, I don't think you need an instruction manual for this. I really like the quality of this. I did have a look at uh, some other brands over at the shop. Um, I think there was like an XCD brand or something like that, but it just didn't look so good in terms of the quality. Um, so, I thought this one would be a goer. Um, oh, this is cool. So, you kind of bend it out. Uh, I wonder where it articulates. Okay, well, this is really cool. It articulates at every single point. So like these ball and socket, these ball and socket joints, um, and they just keep repeating all along. And uh, so you can just completely flex them. They, they have a, they feel quite um, rigid as well. They're definitely going to hold. So I mean, I'm going to use, I have to use two hands to um, to move around. I'll probably use one hand like that but it's pretty hard still. Um, so it's definitely, I like that it's gonna hold. Um, probably a bit annoying getting it back to a completely straight sort of position. Here's the Gorillapod 1K edition in action. As you can see, my Sony A7C is balancing quite nicely on it. And one of the things I really like is that it just feels so stable. Um, some of these other tripods that I've used, I had one that came free included with another kit. The bottom sort of prongs would just bend, not able to really hold uh, too much weight. Whereas this is just really, really, I mean, I'm just hitting it at the base and there's nothing, no sort of movement. Maybe a little bit of jiggle at the top there. Um, just maybe tighten that around. Okay, that's definitely fixed it. Um, 
Now, I'm interested to see how this thing sort of um, swivels around. So what we can do is untighten this uh, thing here. Oop, there we go. So then you can sort of swivel it around. Um, say if I want to uh, just turn the camera around wherever I want and just maybe point it downwards like that. And let's tighten the thing at the back and it holds and it feels pretty stable. Um, I probably have to shift this one forwards, that foot forwards. Um, I don't know. I guess you wouldn't really, I guess you wouldn't really film like this anyway. But um, let's undo this a little bit more again. Um, but it is cool to know that you can swivel this pretty much around wherever. Um, I think when you go on those more extreme angles, you're just going to have balance issues anyway. I really can't fault it and I'm quite pleased with this purchase actually. There was another couple out there. There was the um, 3K kit and the 4K kit and I was really tossing up between getting either one of those two but um, I'm actually glad that I got this one because now that it's out of the box, you know, compared to my hands, um, you know, look at that, it's, it's enough. I don't need something that extends all the way out there. Otherwise, I might as well be carrying around a full-sized um, tripod unless you've got a rig that weighs significantly more than one kilo um, this is going to do you completely fine so I might try on my other lens and just see what it feels like with the other lens okay so I've just gone ahead and swapped over to my Tamron uh, 28 to 200 lens um, Compared to the Sony lens here, the 4 to, what's it, 28 to 60 kit lens, um, double the size and weight, as you can see. And, um, you know, the camera's on a little bit of an angle, and you can see it already start falling forward. If I let go, this thing's going to fall forward. So I'm just going to see if I can shift, balance the weight out a little bit more. Okay, so what I've done is that I've just adjusted the legs so that the camera, um, the front of the camera, is kind of um, balanced in between the two front legs, as you can see. Uh, let me just turn that a little bit. The camera's uh, balanced between the two front legs. And you've got the heavy lens at, on the front this is balancing a lot better so those two legs are providing enough support there's no shift or anything underneath um, again i think this setup's 1. 1.1 1. 1.2 kilos at least so um, i'm really surprised that it is holding up so well um, i wasn't expecting too much especially because I, I wasn't intending to use this um, camera with the <laughs> 28 to 200 lens is more the kit lens more of a portable sort of setup when i'm outdoors doing some filming but um look if you want to use it with a kit that's just over one kilo it does certainly work and um it holds up to that so um i think that's a really good point to make because you know you, you don't want to be going around carrying um, a really large kit if all you need is something like this. I mean this thing's ridiculous and you're probably not gonna you're not gonna carry around something like that but um, you might you might uh, certainly I bring this lens with me when I go traveling as well because it's a very versatile lens um, you know having such a such a wide range so um, it's interesting to know that it does work with it. Um, I recommend a smaller kit lens to all right here we go back on with the Sony 28 to uh, 60 FE lens and wow much lighter much more easy to control so in summary the pros I like about this thing is the quality um, like I did see a few other brands there and they were cheaper, maybe half price, $20, $30. Um, but the quality of the joins were just not so good. They weren't as rigid. The other one that I saw in the shop didn't have the, the entire leg area kind of rubberized, just the bottom. So I think that would be an issue gripping around, um, yeah, just gripping around some objects. So I like that it's, it's completely rubberized with these little grippy things here. Um, the rigidity of it as well really surprised just how um, these ball and socket joints 
uh, provide maximum flexibility, but then so much rigidity and, and flexibility as well to um, go into all these different positions. I wonder how this thing will last long term, whether these joins will eventually start wearing out and then we'll get some, um, you know, and then we'll get some maybe looser joins and stuff like that. I think that's um, inevitable, but I mean, for something that I paid 60, 50, 60 dollars for, I think. Um, I'm just really happy with it. Uh, the little rotation, the little swivel here, I'm uh, really impressed with the swivel and uh, just how easy it is. That it's just one knob essentially and you uh, undo it and then you swivel it around, point the, the camera whichever direction you go and just tighten it up again. Um, easy for beginners to use and um, I think worthwhile definitely paying the extra money for. It is a bit more expensive than some of the other brands out there. So um, if you're looking for something more on a budget, maybe 20 to $30 or something like that, it's probably not, um, not your best option. But um, you can also look at getting um, a normal tripod. There are a lot of tripods that really fold up um, as well. I guess another con that I can think of is if you wanted to get this up a little bit uh, higher, there's no way to extend the legs. And, uh, you know, this is just part of the deal. I think with this product, it wasn't meant, wasn't really designed, um, I guess, to provide uh, maximum height for your camera. It's more to grip around objects and, and um, be a easy to carry along tripod to bring with you. So, um, of course you can't, I don't think you can really expect to have something that extends out that far would kind of defeat the purpose. I think it's worthwhile getting a good quality tripod if you've got, um, you know, this camera here that cost me, I think, depends with the lens, maybe about $3,000. So I don't want to put that on a $20 um, tripod. <laughs> so I think 60 bucks was a pretty good, pretty good investment for something that I can carry around with me. So um that's pretty much it for this review i think as a content creator you're always shopping around trying to find the right gear that works for you in your you know your circumstances and for me you know i don't like to carry a lot of things around um you know probably the most outdoors videos i do is just some trekking stuff around melbourne um you know some uh some urban some urban videos uh, some of these flashlight reviews where I bring the camera outdoors, you know, that's probably about the only time where I use it. So um, I don't need a gigantic tripod and something like this where I can just literally chuck it in my bag and be done with it. Um, I think that's fantastic. I mean, I'll just probably put this head side up into the bag and just chuck it in um, with my other stuff. So um that's pretty much it so thank you for watching if you have any questions leave them in the comments and uh i'll get back to you